I'm all about growing your business with a team and help and not doing everything alone. But just because you hire people, whether they're contractors or W-2 employees, that does not mean that business is all of a sudden easy peasy. In some ways, actually will make your business more complex. There are a lot of challenges that comes with teams, especially with remote teams, or even if they do live in the same place as you, but you're all working independently from home, this creates some communication challenges and all that kind of stuff. I have team members who I've worked with for years and years and years and have literally never met in person, but I'm in communication with them daily or weekly in some capacity and we make it work and we have a great working relationship and I love them dearly all without having to be in the same place. And today I'm sharing with you three questions that I ask my team members, my core team, who are all contractors, by the way, every week. And these are three questions we all answer. And I'm going to talk about like how you can add these questions to your weekly workflow and automate them and ask your team these same questions. Or maybe as you hear my questions, you'll think of new ones that would better fit your unique business. But I actually think these three will work really well for most of you guys listening. So this three question thing, it's easy, it's automated. I actually am doing it all in advance. So this is not something that's going to add more to your plate every week. And it makes a huge difference in team community and productivity activity and everyone just being really in touch with what is going on in the business. So we're about to get to it, but if you want these exact questions in a downloadable way that you can copy and paste, and you want to see exactly how I have this set up in my own business, including example answers of like how we all answer these questions every week. Anyway, I got a guide that goes with this. So go to elizabethmccravey.com slash questions. And I'll link to that in the show notes too. But you can go there absolutely free and get this PDF guide that shows you. So I'm going to show you the three questions exactly as I phrase them, what the setup looks like for automating it, plus some examples for my team of how we use this and answer it at different points with screenshots and all that good stuff. So elizabethmccravey.com slash questions. Now let's get to the questions. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, an online educator for entrepreneurs, website designer, wife, boy mom, and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want to dive deep into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a sustainable business that fits your unique lifestyle while standing out in a crowd, then you are in the right place. I created a multiple six figure year business in my early twenties. And now in my thirties, I'm still running that successful multiple six figure year business on just part-time hours now as a working mom. I'm here to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe that the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like friends chatting business over coffee, and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, website design, personal branding, mindset, time management as a busy parent, scalable and passive income, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. Okay, so let's talk about how to ask these three questions to your team every week. So first of all, you need to know the two main tools I use with my team to run my business are Slack and ClickUp. And we are on the free version of Slack and Slack is actually where these questions are getting posted. And then I'm on the paid version of ClickUp because we do have a lot of people in there. So if you want a free trial of ClickUp though, if you want to check it out and you want a discount, go to elizabethmccravey.com slash ClickUp to get a deal there. Um, I don't have a deal for Slack because I'm just on the free version, but those are our spots. And let's talk about this question situation though. So we have a Slack channel that is called Check-Ins. That's the name of the channel. So I would, if you do this, I'd recommend it being its own channel within Slack. And I would recommend Slack for this, although you could use something like ClickUp You could also use something like Boxer, but I think Slack is going to be the most effective thing. But you might have a project management system where you think like, okay, Elizabeth, I hear you saying that like Slack would be good, but I have a way I could set this up well for me. In that case, like do it. But I found that this works really well in Slack. So we have a Slack channel called check-ins and these questions get automatically posted. So I actually schedule these questions as comments in Slack on that channel And you can schedule stuff in advance on Slack, which is really nice. But I schedule these out two to three months in advance. I usually do it by quarter. So like at the end of the quarter, as I'm beginning a new quarter, I'll schedule them all out for that next quarter and then do that again, so on throughout the whole year. And then it auto posts the questions 
at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time every Monday morning as one comment within that Slack thread from me. And then our expectation as a team is that at some point on that Monday, everyone should answer the question. Unless it's like a holiday week or something like that. But generally speaking, it's like we all answer the question by end of the day Monday. Sometimes someone might get to it on Tuesday, but generally speaking, we all do it by end of the day Monday. And most of us, when we're like diving into work, for the day on Monday, we're commenting on that thread at some point pretty quickly and then able to like check in and see what everyone is doing. So that is how it's set up. And we answer these questions as a comment on the thread. Okay, if you use Slack, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm very into the threads feature in Slack for keeping things organized. I have been in Slack channels before where I get driven crazy by everyone. Like someone posts a comment that's a question and then everyone just comments above it. And then there's another question there that you kind of miss because you're like, you think it's related to the above question. So anyway, I'm really into using threads. So we always respond in threads in Slack in general with my team. So like, you know, someone posts something that's a question, you reply to it in the thread. And then when you have a new topic of conversation, you start a new comment and then you respond in that thread. So that's how we do it. So this is a thread. So if you actually look at this channel at a glance, it looks like me just asking these few questions over and over again, because everyone has responded with their answer in the thread. Okay. So that's how that works. Now, let me tell you the three questions. So the first question, what are two to three things you're working on this week? What do you need from Elizabeth or another team member for your job to keep going? And then third question, what's happening in your life this week? What's something you're excited about and or what's something you could use prayer and support in? So that's well, the third one's obviously three questions, but we count as one. It's basically just like you sending a life update to everyone. And we usually answer within that thread by bolding. Like, so I might put like working on this week, colon, I put that all in bold. And then I put like three bullets under it where I'm explaining what I'm working on this week. And then, you know, needs from team common, and that's all bolded. And then, um, and then you have the bullet points. So that's how we answer. It's not like we're writing like giant paragraphs to each other. And I read all of these um, as soon as people post them, generally speaking, um, if I'm not in the middle of something like I am right now with podcast recording. And I will heart each other's answers so that we can like check in and know that we all read them or like it or, you know, whatever, use some kind of emoji. And this is just so helpful for touching base, keeping track of what's happening in the business. Again, as a remote team, we don't do too many group team meetings. So this is a way we all like keep pulse with like, okay, what is going on this week? What are people working on? All of that. Okay, so now I want to explain the questions a little bit more. If you do this with your own team to think about like how to teach this and how to set it up. So that first one about what you're working on this week, we say two to three things. Maybe for you, it's one thing. Maybe for you, it's five things, whatever it is. But for us, it is supposed to be a thing in my business, not other things you're working on. Because like I said at the beginning, my team members, I have three team members who are in Slack with me. And then I have some other contractors as well who are only in ClickUp. But with the Slack situation, it's just, you know, it's four of us total, but they all have their own businesses and they have other clients and other things they're doing. So the way we answer this is not like, hey, what are you working on this week in your business or for this other client of yours? It's what are you working on in this particular business, in my business? So that's just something to think about. If you do have team members who are in that same boat, like I'm saying, like, do you want it to be like just generally what they're working on that week? Or do you want it to only be stuff they're working on in your business? And then the needs question, this is so helpful. This is an area that I end up being like, wait, let me read through it every one sec. Because it does often end up being things they need from me. But I'll often message my team after this. Sometimes I'll even comment back in the thread for the check-in. Or I'll privately message them regarding what they need. Or I'll tell them like, hey, okay, I'm going to add that to my to-do list for the day. Or actually, I'm going to like do that for you right now. Or after this meeting, I'm going to do that thing for you. Or like, you know, thanks for reminding me of this. So that's a really helpful question. And how people answer that one, sometimes it's like, I don't need anything this week. I think I'm good. Sometimes, um, like my uh, customer support manager, Stacy, who's incredible. If you've ever emailed me, you've probably emailed with her. But sometimes she'll have quite a few things where she's like, Elizabeth, I need you to look at this email, this email, and this email. And she's like putting like five emails in for me to look at. You know, sometimes Kara, who manages the podcast, might be like, we need to like approve this thing or like this guest hasn't scheduled the thing yet or, you know, whatever. And so it's things like that, right? And then I often have needs for people where I'm like, hey, make sure you didn't miss this thing I tagged you in and click up or like, what's the status on this project, you know, whatever it is. So that's a, 
a good question that really helps you keep pulse on like making sure you're not missing things other places and knowing what everyone's working on. And then the third one about what's happening in your life, basically, this is like my favorite because it helps us as a remote team that, like I said, doesn't do meetings that often as a group to know what's going on with each other. Um, you also heard in there, I said, what's something you could use prayer or support in? Um, I talked of quite a few episodes ago now about how to integrate your faith into your business more. If you missed those two episodes, let me see what numbers they were. Those were episodes 258 and 259. So go listen to those if you want to like think about integrating your faith into your business more. But talking this episode about praying for your team and asking this sort of question is a great way to be able to pray for your team of just knowing like what's going on. And also it helps you show up with more empathy as a boss in your business. So like, you know, when, if someone comments that they're having a really hard week and this X, Y, and Z thing is happening in your per- their personal life, you will never know that unless you ask these kinds of questions, right? Especially again, with a remote team, like when you're all going into the office together every day, maybe it naturally comes up that they're going through this hard thing in their personal life because you're just talking, you know, at the water cooler, that concept, so to speak. But um, when you're all remote, that stuff doesn't come up. So this can help you show up better and support them better and then support you better too by you guys all knowing what's going on. And I should say that too. I'm asking these questions to my team, but I'm also answering them all myself if that wasn't clear. So anyway, there's a little bit more info about those questions there. And I also will say at the beginning of these three questions, you can see it in the guide if you want to kind of see some examples, but I'm not just like, it's not just these questions. I'll say like, happy Monday. Um, I'm tagging everyone so they know to come comment. And if it's like a holiday week, someone's birthday week, a launch week or something like that, I will mention it. So it might say like, you know, happy Easter week or, you know, happy 4th of July week or happy birthday to Kara, you know, those sorts of things will be in there as well. And that's why I don't like to schedule it out farther than just a quarter at a time because I, you know, stuff changes closer. So I, I usually do a quarter and sometimes I used to do less than a quarter. Sometimes I would just do like a month at a time, but now I consistently do like a quarter at a time, which means that sometimes I'll go back in and edit these to add in like happy launch week. Cause we might not have it planned out that far in advance. Also, I just want to note real quick, if any of you guys are like super Slack pros and you're thinking like, Elizabeth, there's actually a way to automate this with Slack bot where it just automatically posts something every week in a channel. Um, That is an option, but I like having it come from me and customizing it a little bit with that message at the beginning. Um, And sometimes I add an additional question. Like if it's a holiday week, I might be like, hey, we're not checking in like normal this week, but like, tell me what, you know, how your Christmas was or like whatever, whatever it is, something like that. So that's why I don't use that feature. And instead I just go in and do it automatically myself. And worth noting with that, this takes like no time. (laughs) It takes me like five minutes probably to do this for an entire quarter. And I just have to do it once and then it's done. So this isn't something that's going to like take you tons and tons of time. So anyway, that is it though. I hope you'll try this. You can literally implement it anytime. So like as this is airing next week, if you're like, Hey team, we're going to start doing this, like do it. Um, even if it's just you and one team member, this is worth doing. Okay. All you need is one team member who is a contractor or an employee, doesn't matter, but who is helping you in your business on a consistent basis. That's all you need for this to be something worth doing that will help you with productivity, help you with team communication, help you with structure, and help everyone feel more like they understand and have a pulse on what's going on. So worth doing. And you can get that free guide I mentioned to copy and paste the questions and see how I set it up in Slack with example answers and all that at elizabethmccravey.com slash questions with an S on the end of questions. And that is linked in the show notes for you guys. So let me know. I'd love to hear from you on Instagram. If you're like, Hey, I'm going to do this. Send me what your Slack channel looks like. Send me your setup. If you have any follow up questions, I'm here for you as well. But yeah, I'd love to know if this is something you're going to try for yourself. And I hope this helps you with your team in your business. So you can get those questions again at elizabethcravey.com slash questions. I'll be back next week with another fun episode. Bye guys. Thank you for listening to the podcast, friend. I appreciate you being here. That just flew by, didn't it? Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, I really want to encourage you to check out my website where you will find tons of resources to help you grow a profitable and sustainable business. Over on ElizabethMcCravey.com, you'll find things like free workbooks, guides, quizzes, lock screens, and checklists to encourage you in your business, help you grow, and give you practical solutions to many business problems. You'll also find my top business tools. Like, yes, I literally list out all the major ones for you on my website. And I even have a lot of special discounts and offers for you guys to snag as you try these products, services, and softwares. 
If you want to take the podcast content and make it super actionable, my resource page is here to help. So go to elizabethbacravey.com slash tools to access everything. I hope you have fun exploring all of it over there. And if you loved this episode, leave a rating review for the show wherever you're listening or share with a friend. That's a great way to support the podcast. And I appreciate it so much. Thanks again so much for listening. I'll be back next week with a new episode. Bye for now.